Hi everyone and welcome back to On The Bucket. Today we're going to have a nice little snake talk. Hi! 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 Welcome to our channel. Hello. Hello. If you enjoy learning about reptiles and having a good laugh, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Hit. Smash it. Smash. Smash it. Smash it right now. And don't forget to Hit that notification bell. Head. Mass. Mass. Smash it. Mass. Okay. Mass. <laughs> so, just talking about snake care. Lots of uh, videos have all these guides and tell you exactly how to do things. You know, you need to have a hot spot of this, you need to have a humidity of this, you need to have these temperatures, you need to have these ambient temperatures and all these things. And those are wonderful. When you're starting off, those are what you have to look to as your guides. Now, I'm not telling you that later on you get to say, forget all that, you can just make it whatever temperature you want. But what is being overlooked, I think more than anything, is what is going to make you the best pet keeper is not just perfect conditions for your animals, but observation, watching your animals, paying attention to them. What are your animals doing? Because they'll tell you how they're feeling by how they behave, by what's going on. So you could have all the settings perfectly, but your snake is always hanging out in the cold side, or your snake is always hanging out in the hot side, or your snake just had a shed and it was a bloody mess. So what, what I'm trying to say is that what I want to give you more is, is, is the practical knowledge. I'm not going to go and tell you, you know what, you need to do this and you need to do that because there's lots of people out there doing that and most of the time when people have a problem, they go to groups and then somebody on the group says, oh, well, you're doing this and this and this and this wrong and that is not helpful. It's helpful to help people understand what they should be doing, but in the end, what matters the most is how are the snakes doing? How, how are they reacting to the way that you have them set up? Now, I have over here a temp gun now, and over a hundred snakes, and I'm telling you, I don't go in every day and check the temperatures and make them perfect. I don't have anything really reading the humidity for any of their homes. I don't know the ambient temperatures for most of my snake homes. I have a little dial in this room so I know what the temperature of the room is and it's pretty hot in here. It's about 83 degrees and then the humidity drops because we're in Canada. So I invested in a wonderful humidifier that I run through the room all the time so that there's a nice amount of humidity in here because my normal area, it's dry. I'm drying out. I got to order three more of these humidifiers just so that the air feels better for me, never mind the snakes. So that was something that I felt, you know, the snakes are going to need more humidity. I got a humidifier for them before I got one for myself. I'll do a video about that eventually. But really, you need to watch your snakes. You need to see what they're doing. If anything is off with any of my snakes or even starting to be off, I usually catch it. And then I adjust the things accordingly. Having good equipment and good space and good everything is something that also helps a lot too. So when I first started I had all sorts of different um, thermostats and different setups. So different things happened with each one. There were things that I liked, there were things that I didn't like. Something I can tell you personally that I really don't like about most thermostats is that they turn on and off. So they get to a certain temperature and then once they hit that temperature they turn off, it drops a couple degrees and then one, it's set that once it drops a degree or two now it turns on again. So your thermostat is always turning on and off. So then I learned about something called a pulse proportional thermostat or basically a dimming. So it's a thermostat that holds the temperature and as it gets kind of colder it gives it a little bit more power and as it's the right temperature it kind of goes down to almost being off but it never actually shuts off it always sends a little bit of something 
So over time, after going through all sorts of different thermostats, I got myself a Herbstat 6, which to me is like one of the best thermostats you can get. It controls the temperature for one, two, three, five different systems, and it can control the temperature for all for a sixth one. If I want to set up something else, I can adjust the temperature there. I can change it. I can do temperature drops. Also, being aware that maybe the top home inside your rack might be a bit warmer than the bottom home, and understanding over time, you know, uh, in a rack. Some it might be warmer, some might be colder, and then I can say, okay, guess what? My rat snakes or corn snakes, they're okay if it's like maybe a degree or two colder, so I'm gonna put them at the bottom of the rack. And then these snakes, they like it a bit warmer, so I'm gonna put them closer to the top of the rack. And really understanding how everything works and adjusting to it all. And spending time with the animals. I love using the example of the green tree python because so many people say, they're nippy or they're hard to take care of or they're difficult and I've found them to be super easy. The one difference is I have to spray them every day so give them some misting but and if they did have a problem shed it's a pain in the butt because their sheds are so like thin and flaky they're almost like gecko sheds so um but they have perfect one-piece sheds and they're not head shy I can play with their faces, I can reach in at night, I can do anything with them. And this is not because I keep them in perfect conditions like by the book. It's because I spend time playing with them, I spend time getting to know them. Each one of my snakes has a name, each one of my snakes I know, I know which snakes are kind of more shy. I know which snakes like to come out, I know which snakes don't like to come out, and sometimes I'll push those boundaries. So maybe I'll say, you know what, this snake doesn't really like coming out, but I'm going to force it to be a little bit uncomfortable for a bit, it's going to get over it, and next thing you know, that's the snake that's coming to the edge always saying, hey, take me out, play with me. They don't actually say that, but there's body language, and there's so much you can tell about a snake through its body language. In um, the Green Tree Python Forum, Anytime somebody shows a picture of a snake outside of their home, lots of the time they'll excuse themselves for that, like they're doing something wrong, like, oh, I just took it out to clean it. So it's just like the only time you can ever take your green tree python out is when you're cleaning their home. To me, that's absolute ridiculousness. <laughs> I take out my snake to play with it and for it to have some outside time. And it doesn't stress the snake, it doesn't stress the animal, because a stressed animal tries to run away. It tries to get away from you, or it nips you, or it's afraid. When we see the snake, is it afraid? Is it trying to get away? Does it look like I'm really bothering it? <laughs> like, it's so super chill. And it didn't get that way just because of me leaving it alone. That's another thing that people will say. Now, when you're getting a new snake and you put it in a fresh home, sure, leave it alone, let it get used to things. But by ignoring an animal, it's never going to make that animal feel more comfortable with you. By spending time with an animal that's kind of scared of you and showing it that there's no reason to be afraid of you, that's how you pass boundaries. Not by just spending time looking at it, but by spending time showing it that, hey, guess what? When you spend time with me, nothing bad happens you're not getting hurt. We're just having a good time. That's really what I'm trying to show people. And I'll do certain things that could be considered wrong, but I'm testing and playing with things and I'm getting certain results. So if, if people are trying things that are not working, then you gotta try other things that do work. It's a constant trial and error and just because something maybe works for me, doesn't mean it'll work for you. Just because something works for you doesn't mean it'll work for someone else. But we have taken these creatures kind of out of the wild and we're not giving them exactly what they have outside. Outside the temperature goes up, it goes down, it does all sorts of crazy things. Here we have a controlled temperature, but they're not as like robotic as so many people make them out to be. Every single snake has a different personality. Every single snake has different likes and dislikes. 
Do our snakes love us? No, but they definitely can like us or dislike us. And the only way we're going to be able to build a relationship with them is by spending time with them. So I'm just really encouraging you, especially as a new person, spend time with your snake. Spend time maybe not even messing around with it, but observing it, watching it. Look at what it's doing. And by looking at what it does, you're going to know what it needs. Yeah, that was wonderful, wasn't it? Now make sure you click circle. Yeah, click the circle. Yeah, I do. And then watch this video or this one. No. Yeah? No. Yes, it's not that hard. Which one appeals to you more? Is it this one or is it this one?